Empathy maps are incredibly useful design tools that help you to better understand what are your users' needs and how can you design a product from a user-centric perspective. In this online tutorial, we are going to cover what are the empathy maps, what different types of empathy maps are, when, how to use them, and why they are useful. The empathy maps are designing tools that are used at the beginning of the design process by the design team. What you do is you interview either one single user or a group of users to try to gather as much information as you can about their interaction and their feelings about your product or your service. You have a template like the one here on the left and then you fill it up with your own notes that could be post-its, texter notes or whatever you feel comfortable with and ideally you do it as a team so more than one person should be part of this process. The empathy map it's what we call a collaborative visualization tool. It's collaborative because you usually do it with someone else in your team, it's very hard to do a proper empathy map, same as it's very hard to do a good user interview all by yourself. So ideally, it's more than two or three people in the designing team that they take part of it. And if you are doing this as part of an assessment or as part of a business idea competition, it's good that more than one person in the team is involved in this process of accessing data from the user and interviewing the user or just collecting primary and secondary uh, research. There are two different types of empathy maps. What we call single user empathy map, that is, as I said, when you sit down with your user and interview them, and throughout the interview you get data that you put in and, and that you use to fill out your empathy map, that user is real. And Best scenario, you get to interview them. Second best scenario, you get primary data uh, from those users. For example, from a, uh, if, they, if the user fills a log, logbook, then you access that data, and based on that data, you fill out the empathy map. When we talk about personas empathy map or multiple users, multiple users empathy maps, what we are talking about is about the segment. So we are not talking about one individual real user anymore. We are talking about the synthesis of data and the conclusions that we are gathering after interviewing many different users or through secondary research. Personas empathy maps are the first step to create a persona but are not the same. So persona empathy maps are not the same of personas. And we won't cover personas in this video, but I would definitely recommend you to take a look if you want to know more about that. When to use um, empathy map? Usually we use empathy maps at the, at the beginning of the design process. So if you are about to embark into the process of designing a product or a service, for your user, it's always useful to do empathy maps first because that will give you an opportunity to gather first-hand information from the user but also to check your assumptions, to remove your personal biases and to avoid to do any projections. In case of entrepreneurs that are very passionate about their ideas and their businesses and their products, it's very, very easy to convince yourself that actually your user really needs this. Empathy maps help us to put these um, assumptions on hold and to actually check them by interviewing and talking with the user and writing down those conclusions using the empathy map. You can also use the empathy map to gather information from other people in the decision-making unit, for example, customers, champions, influencers, gatekeepers, advisors. So it can be useful to gather, prioritize, and categorize information obtained from any interaction from anyone in the decision-making unit. We will focus on how that applies to the user in this video today, but it can be done to any other member of the decision-making unit. 
So how to use it? As you could see uh, from my first slide, the empathy map is a very simple tool that has four quadrants. And those quadrants reflect what the user does, feel, think, and said in relationship with my product. And this is usually something that you witness as a designer through an interview or just watching how your user interacts with your product or service. That's why I usually recommend for more than one person to take, play, uh, to take um, part of this process because there is a lot to observe, said and non-said, um, in, in this interaction. And it's very easy to miss things or again to apply your own biases to the things that you see and you hear. So it's usually uh, really, really good if uh, more than one person can be in the interview or in the observation of the user, one person to interact directly with the user and one other person to take notes. So imagine you are interviewing a user about um, their relationship with your product or you're just watching how a user interacts with your product. Imagine you're putting your user in front of your prototype and your prototype is a website that goes from all the, all the products to the checkout process, contact details and information gathering process to um, the last page where it says thank you for your order, you'll get an email shortly, right? So it goes through all those different phases of the buying process online. So imagine you are witnessing, witnessing that as a designer. So what you have to fill out or what you have to do using the empathy map is to write down what the user says, thinks, feels and does throughout that interaction. Of course, there will be moments where you don't really know if something you are seeing or witnessing belongs to right now, the think category or the feel category and that's all right. Don't get too caught up on where this observation goes. Just chuck it somewhere. There is always time to reorganize that if it doesn't feel okay. There will be incongruences and inconsistencies, especially between the set and think. Maybe the user is saying something like, oh, yeah, this website is very user-friendly, for example. But then you can see that what he's doing is frowning uh, all the time, which means that maybe he's not finding it that useful. So write all those things down because incongruences or inconsistencies are part of human nature and are also really important to identify things of your product that maybe don't work all right. There would be overlapping as well, like maybe things that are across the different categories and that's fine. And as a designer or as a, someone that's filling out an empathy map, it's really good to ask open-ended questions and keep an open, uh, non-judgmental, curious observation. So that's what, again, I encourage more than one person to be part of this process because if you are taking notes, you cannot really look that much at what that person is doing and vice versa. If you're really, really present and just looking at how that person is interacting with your product, it's very easy to miss things. And I would like to say also, just to um, wrap up this slide, that it's very important to pay attention to what is not said, to the silences, to the pauses, and to the body language. Body language can give us really good, good keys into how the user interacts with your product or how the user talks about your product and that's something you cannot gather from secondary uh, research so it's really important to take the most of those opportunities when you get to meet your user to gather as much of um, that body language and silences and pauses and um, interactions. What are the benefits of filling out an empathy map and to use an empathy map at the beginning of your design process. As I said, it's something that you will, you will use as a compass, which means that whenever you have to take design decisions such as, should we include this feature? Should we leave out this interface? Should we add this extra component? You can always go back to your um, empathy map and think whether those components are the top priorities and really fit what you think your user needs. For that particular um, aspect, for the 
empathy map being a compass is really useful to have personas empathy maps so not all the individual empathy maps but to be able to synthesize all that information and create one empathy map that represents the core of your segment it also as i mentioned before reduces biases and uh, forces the design team to check their assumptions but also brings the design team together because um it's very easy to get lost in the details uh, and it, it's really helpful to go back to the design to the empathy map as kind of a big picture thing i also like uh, the empathy map because it's a very simple tool which doesn't mean that it's an easy tool to use but it's a simple tool that helps to organize complex information and to provide a quick visualization and very accessible visualization to that information at any given time. So it's something that, for example, if you're creating a business, you can print out and put up on the wall. So whenever you have to make a decision, you can always go back to the design at the empathy map and see if that's coherent with what your user wanted and what your user considered important. That's it for today. I hope you enjoy your video. There is plenty of good stuff on our website. So please check out our website, follow us on socials. And if you want to know more, you can always join our newsletter and also an email if you have any questions. It has been a pleasure. Thank you very much. See you soon.